Happy Thanksgiving to you. This is my uh, one of the few holidays I celebrate. Is this one? And I'm going to explain why tonight. It's going to go good. All right. Yeah, the Divine Healing Seminar is next. That's next week, right? What's today? Today's 23rd, so that would be, yeah, next Friday. Why are some people healed? Why are some people not healed? We'll go through that. Okay, we've got the announcements here then. Uh, YouTubers, thanks for tuning in tonight. Say hi to my girl Tracy. She's watching tonight. I'm on the radio seven days a week on 10, 10 a.m. at those times. And I'm on 24-7 on OmniFM.com. You can catch that off the website. I'm also on Sunday nights at 9 o'clock on the Dark Sky Radio Secular Station. The listeners are up to 1,700 now, so I'm about 50% what I was before I got sick. <coughs> Whittling my way back. Hey, if you'd like to help us out in 2019 by donating money, you can do it through SmileAmazon.com. They'll pay us if you buy stuff off there, if you put in our uh, charity name. Same thing on Good Search. Go to Google the Good Search. They'll pay us while you surf the web. Tonight's teaching is on our YouTube teaching channel, House of Healing AZ. The two lists, just send me an email, Mike at HardcoreChristianity.com, or download them off the website for mentally ill Christians and troubled Christians. Deliverance at home. Thank you for opening up your terror cells. I get your emails. I'm so happy when you send them in. YouTubers, you open up a terror cell in your church. You start praying for the sick people and people that need deliverance. Set up your own little sub rosa group in your church, and you sneak around praying for people until you get caught. All right, in the bookstore, I wrote uh, three books. One's on uh, root cause and cure of mental illness. The other one's on what we'll be discussing next Friday, divine healing and Satan. We'll be at the Restoration of Hope Church in Los Angeles, December 22nd. You know anybody in L.A.? Nobody? All right. If, unless it's burnt down, then we'll be having another location. All right. Now listen, I got some sophisticated spiritual warfare for you tonight. It's technically not spiritual warfare. If you want to advance yourself in 2019 as a uh, dangerous person spiritually, you're going to have to develop these skills I'm going to ch show you tonight, or you're never going to make it. You'll never amount to diddly squat for God if you don't develop top-of-the-line spiritual skills. Hey, when you first got saved, you were sucking on the breast. What were you drinking? Milk. Milk is for spiritual babies. For you to amount to anything spiritually, hey, you're going to have to get on to meat, not pork. <laughs> Don't want to get an email. You got to get on strong meat to develop yourself into a very dangerous poison, as Mickey told Rocky. See, you put this string on your feet, and you learn to move, and you punch with that string, and you become a very dangerous poison. Well, spiritually, it works exactly the same way. You can't stay a milk-sucking baby for the rest of your career. You can't do it. No amens on that, but in your mind, you said an amen. I heard you in your mind. See, I'm just a mind reader. That's it. He's reading minds now. Oh, God, we got to get out of here. You have got to grow from a milk drinker to a meat eater. See? It's like prehistoric animals, right? Millions of years ago. You had your meat eaters. You had your 
vegetarians the meat eaters ate the vegetarians You are gonna have to become a meat eater like a tyrannosaurus rex Or an allosaurus or a pterodactyl some vicious prehistoric cold-blooded killer That's what you need to do Why does it sound loving? It's very loving when you develop your spiritual skills and you see people healed and delivered and saved out of the clutches of Satan That is the most loving thing you can do for somebody But that's never going to happen if you don't start developing some nasty skills So let's go into the upper echelon of greatness tonight I'm going to take you where the great ones go Not the milk suckers all right Leviticus chapter 7 Jehovah had a system set up for Jews the nation of Israel and They were peace offerings and every time he set up a system for Jews He always set up a process and he would explain it to him in detail and I want this done that done this done that done do it this way or that way if you didn't do it exactly that way <laughs> oh Things went bad for you real bad doesn't go that way anymore. Why? You're in the dispensation of grace But in the Old Testament here here's what it was the law of peace offerings Offered to the Lord had to be offered with Thanksgiving and a sacrifice of unleavened cakes mingled with oil unleavened wafers anointed with oil Cakes mingled with oil and fine flour then fried See it's a special divine menu Yahweh gave to the Jews and Here it is. It's right in Leviticus And it says because the cake besides the cakes you'll offer unleavened bread with the sacrifice of thanksgiving for all peace offerings you could not have a peace offering unless you had the final ingredient, the most important one, which was thanksgiving. Okay. Leviticus 22, when you offer a sacrifice of thanksgiving to the Lord, you must offer it at, what a novel thought, your own will. Now you know why singing and worshiping doesn't work at church. Mega churches have the most spectacular singing and worshiping you've ever seen. It doesn't work. Worship and thanksgiving is an individual blessing. It doesn't work work because you're in a group with other people doing it. I mean, nobody heard that. If you're in a group and they're singing away, it's not going to do you a bit of good. The Holy Ghost doesn't see groups. He sees each individual separately yes. and he knows whether you're worshiping or not. It doesn't matter whether you're singing. You can sing and not be grateful. Don't you ever watch a rap video? <laughs> They're not too grateful for anything. A rap video. They got the biatches and the hoes getting down on bow. None of that stuff's great, but they're singing. Singing's got nothing to do with anything. The singing have to do with anything. This is spiritual. This is in your heart. Right here. It's in your heart. Huh? So Jehovah said, hey, listen, it's up to you individually whether you get a peace offering blessing from God. Huh? Miracles happen when people are thankful. Jonah. Yes, sir. Jonah. <laughs> Chapter 2. This guy was in a world of hurt. Yes, he was. He was swallowed by some kind of a whale or something. That's a bad day. <coughs> I've, and I've had bad days myself. And he's got me beat. You get sucked up by a whale. You, that sucks. And what happened to him? His thanksgiving and his praise returned to him. And guess what happened? Jehovah took him out of hell and this fish Vomited him out and That symbolism of Jonah Jesus used many times in the New Testament and he used it one time in Revelation and it was pure 
pure hell He told this one church that if they didn't change he was gonna Jonah Puke them right out. That's exactly what he said But Jonah got puked out and it was the best day of his life Very few people have that kind of blessing anointing to have vomiting the best day of your life. It's rare I've never even heard of it Because vomiting in my mind is something usually negative That's not a fun afternoon to be heaving It was for Jonah. He flew out of that Whale's mouth. I mean flew out of it on shore dancing Couldn't wait to get home. How did he get there? What was the key? He he was thankful Thankfulness brings miracles and all great men and women of God Develop that skill. That's a special skill very few people develop only a small percent of Christians develop Thankfulness Very few of them develop How about Daniel Wow Daniel 6 Hey, they got the thing the memo from the king. They said hey When you hear this orchestra go off You worship these gods Daniel you said wait a minute. I got the memo, but I I put that in the trash can it says that he uh, ignored it. And it says he went back to his prayer time and he kneeled upon his knees three times a day, giving what? Thanks. <clears throat> the great prophet Daniel got revelations from God. Nobody before him and nobody after him except the Apostle John ever received. This guy was an incredible. Man of God But he had a secret Greatness has a secret It's thankfulness He was a grateful person for the things of God Thankfulness motivates God to give you more stuff Being thankful is the greediest thing you can do It motivates the Holy Ghost when he sees you're grateful over the little things, he makes you ruler over many things. Daniel got visions and dreams unparalleled anywhere. His vision and dream in chapter 10 to this day is absolutely shocking. He predicted the history of our world. It was unbelievable. Alexander the Great, all the great kings, the countries, everything is in that, that, that vision. Unbelievable. It would have never happened had he not developed these skills I'm sharing with you today. Gratefulness. People who are grateful. Temple priests. Check this out. In uh, Second Chronicles, it says, It came to pass as the trumpeters and singers made one sound to be heard in praising and thanking Yahweh. It says when they lifted up their voice with the musical instruments Saying the Lord is good His mercy endures forever the house was filled with a cloud The priest could not stand to minister because of that cloud Why the kabod fell down the glory of the Lord Years ago, decades ago actually, holy rollers came along and gave the church a bad name because they would see them rolling around in church, laughing like fools, and so on. And then later on, years later, back in the 90s, the prophetic movement came along and upgraded it from holy rolling to all kinds of bizarre behavior, holy laughter. People acting a fool, people running around the church, claiming it was the glory of God. Well, the Bible actually disproves that, and if you're astute enough to read it, kabod in Hebrew means means weighted splendor. And the glory of God, when it comes down, the real glory, not the laughing uh, demonic glory, where the 
Kundalini spirits are laughing like crazy. The real glory of God falls down and people are broken when it falls. People are awestruck when it falls. People are humbled and repentant when it falls. People are like, oh my God. That's incredible. They drop to their knees. The holy asinine movement that's floating through the churches where people are acting like certified fools, that's kundalini glory. That's from familiar spirits. We're going to get some emails there. Kabod, the true glory of God, people react totally differently to that than they do kundalini glory. For example, so, so when the princes came out of the holy place, the cloud filled the house, 1 Kings 8, so that uh, the house of Yahweh, so the priest could not stand to minister because of the cloud, the glory, kabod, fell, and they fell too. Amen. When the true glory of God falls at that level, People are not doing cartwheels, laughing, and party on, dude. No, they're they're cr crumbling in the presence of the incredible Holy Ghost. You say, well, the presence of God is everywhere. It is, it's omnipresence, but his glory is in very few places on this earth. In heaven, it's all over the place. Okay, that's none of my business right now. The glory of God rarely manifests. Why? Christians are very rarely truly thankful They're too busy too confused too distracted too hurt too wounded too angry too bitter To be thankful too disappointed over their lives. I didn't make the sale I, they didn't call me my friends didn't this didn't happen That's a disappointment the disappointment stack up and the thankfulness goes down And the glory Ichabod on the dope the priests were thankful to Jehovah and they were worshipers. Praise and thankfulness are maternal twins. Have you ever noticed? They always seem to go together. Thankful people naturally generate praise. They don't have to be told to praise. Like the mega church, stand up. Sing this song. Well, oh, okay. No, no. Thankful people are thankful without you telling them they need to be thankful. And praise comes out without you saying it's time to praise. It just comes out naturally. Flows naturally. Thankful people. Jesus set the example. Matthew 15. Jesus took the seven loaves and he gave thanks what was he doing there like he always did setting an illustration or a pattern for us to follow everything he did was a pattern for us to follow a few things obviously weren't the crucifixion and so on but his ministry behaviors was him saying hey look at me i'm doing it this way why don't you try it that way here's my attitude why don't you adopt my attitude everything about him from the time of young to old was a teaching experience He's teaching again here. Thank you for these loaves now our loaves um, Is it worth billions of dollars is it the greatest thing no, it's a simple thing a loaf of bread is eating It's no a meal is no big deal. You're hungry uh, you know, later, it, particularly if you hit the Chinese buffet, you're hungry about an hour and a half later. <laughs> but what he was saying was, even the little things he was teaching us, he's showing us here, he's demonstrating what needs to be done. The little thing, thank you for the sandwich, thank you for this, thank you. He was teaching us to be thankful for little things because when you are, you get some gasping anointing from God. No one had one higher than the great Savior. He gives it to his disciples. Matthew 14, he commands the multitude to sit down. He took the grass and he said, five loaves and two fishes. He looks up to heaven and 
Ulegel. What is a eulogio? Well, it's where we get our English word eulogy. Where do you hear a eulogy at? Funerals. Funerals. I'm a little concerned tonight. I didn't get an amen on thanks, but I got a lot of people responding to funeral. <laughs> All right. I'm in some trouble. <laughs> Listen, uh, eulogy is a eulogy, and that's when you speak well or you speak out a series of verbal blessings over something or someone. Correct? Yeah. So he's here he is speaking a eulogy of sorts over loaves. Loaves. These loaves turned out to be a big deal because they multiplied in staggering supernatural fashion. And what's he telling you? Thankful people get multiplied blessings. Ingrates get <laughs> that's Arabic. Now, Matthew 26, as Jesus looked, took the bread, he blessed it, same Greek word, and then he gave it to the disciples and said, This is this is my body. Wow. What a great eulogy that was. What was he doing there? A eulogy is something to be thankful for. You know, have you ever been to a funeral of a bad person? <laughs> Nobody? Well, uh, rotten people die too, and they have funerals. And people get up and they make stuff up. And it's unbelievable. They get up there and they're scraping for something good to say. And then they make something up about the person. But the point is, they say something, a collection of positive, thankful things. You know, if your dad was a womanizer and a drunk, you know, somebody gets up and says, well, Bob died. And you know what? Uh, he was very sociable. And he was, he was good with people. They temporarily liked him. You know, you gotta, you're, you're digging down at the bottom of the barrel to come up with something in a eulogy. But the point is, you're saying something nice about the person, see? And he probably was good. I mean, you can't be a serial adulterer and not have some kind of a personality asset because you're picking up a bunch of chicks. But that isn't the easiest thing to do. That takes some skill. So you kind of bring that out. You're trying to make it. You put a, as Grandpa used to say, you put a good face on it. it some, some things are not good. He took the cup and did what? Thank you. Golly. Thank you for your broken body that heals me. Thank you for your blood that saves me. Thanks, is what he was saying. Luke chapter 10. The disciples come back and they're so happy. I. Understand what happened. Jesus uh, transferred an anointing on them. <laughs> they went out and they saw all kinds of people getting saved, healed, and delivered. They came back and gave him this glorious story. He put it in perspective for them. And then in his private moment, he did this. Check this out. In that hour, Jesus rejoiced in spirit. And he said, I thank you, Father, Lord of heaven. Agaliao means to laugh and leap for joy. <laughs> Can you imagine Jesus? I don't know where he was. Maybe out in the field, side of a mountain, jumping around, laughing <laughs> for joy. Yes. Most people don't see him in that posture. Uh, most Catholic pictures are, it's solemn. There was another side to Jesus. He had a full, complete personality. It wasn't all... As he's betrayed, he he had he was a laugher over stuff, <laughs> and he was laughing because he was so what thankful that his father had done what showed these disciples, giving them a chance to have this incredible anointing. Amen. For example, this doesn't have anything to do with our teaching, but. I pulled this other text up, Matthew 9. You know the story. Jesus ends up at Jairus' house, and he says, Hey, the, the maid, the, his daughter's not dead. She's sleeping. 
and they all knew she was dead so they started to laugh at him now this word is similar to the other word that I used in the text a means to jump and be joyful and laugh over something good okay well this Greek word here Katagalao means to laugh or mock laughing. Ha! What? Oh God, did you hear that? The guy's an idiot. See the difference there? One's laughing over something positive, joyfully, and the other one's mocking laughing, which they laughed over Jesus because they knew the girl was dead. They thought he was an idiot. They laughed him to scorn, it says. They Ridiculed him ripped him to shred so back to the other text Jesus said you hid these things from Sunitas what's that? That's people who think they have it figured out You ever met somebody like that? Yeah I've had some of them on my ministry team uh, They give me an urge to start drinking again Once you think you got everything figured out you are no longer a learner this on as soon as you think you know everything or you got this thing down pat you are no longer a disciple of Christ you're no longer a learner mathetes in Greek means an ardent learner because you got it all figured out oh I got that down I already got that you used to call them know-it-alls people were know-it-alls Jesus is laughing and jumping <laughs> Can't believe that over what he took Jehovah took these great gifts from people who think they know it all and gave them to who who Anepius toddlers toddlers check it out a disciple of God is like a toddler why toddlers are always looking to get into something and learn more but they don't have the wisdom and knowledge to quite get it packed in but their attitude is always what's that where's that where'd you get that what'd you wear that for can I hold that can I have that can I stick my hand there can I eat that can I lick that kids are always looking to learn something new and God only gives great wisdom and blessings and knowledge to people who are toddlers who are thankful. Hey, that's an important incident. If Jesus was jumping and laughing over it, you know, I put it in my important file. There aren't too many places where he was jumping and laughing. But what was he laughing about? Oh man. God took this precious gift of koinonia, the communion of the Holy Ghost, and gave it to a bunch of toddlers and didn't give it to the scribes and Pharisees who thought they knew it all. As soon as you think you know it all, your ministry is heading toward the end. Thankfulness brings deliverance. It sure does. Psalms 18. He delivers me from my enemies. Every demon you've ever heard of or ever thought you heard of is your enemy. There are no good demons. There are no demons that like you. Satan never likes you. If he gives you something, he's setting you up to take something away from you. It's always a fraud. He's always lying. Hey, guess what? You can be delivered from your enemies, spiritual and physical. You lift me up above the, those that rise up against me. Well, the devil does that 24-7. You have delivered me from violence. Therefore, I will give you... Thanks. Thanks. <laughs> Thank you. Look at some of these great Holy Ghost preachers. And you see uh, their lives they were all high, they all had hard lives but they all had spectacular victories 
along with great challenges almost every single one of them none of them had a cakewalk but they all had the same quality grateful thank you thanks It's true in every walk of life, is it not? Yeah, absolutely. A multi-millionaire, a billionaire, businessman, everybody's always asking, how'd you do that? A great athlete, winning this, winning that. How'd you do that? And what are you looking for? You're looking for a pattern in the athlete, in, in the person. Everybody studies Warren Buffett like he's a god. They look at his attitude, they look at what he thinks, they want to know how he was raised. They nitpick the living stuffing out of the guy. Why? They're looking for a pattern. How in God's name could somebody make that much money in the stock market? That's not even possible. You see, you're looking for a pattern in a person. You look at the great faith healers, you get the apostles. What was the pattern? One of them was, all of them were thankful people. So if I see that pattern in all of them, that's red flagging me. Hey, there's a pattern here. Athletes are like that all the time. What do you, what do you, what do you eat? What's your diet? What kind of protein do you take? Yeah, what, what, what do you exercise? Do you have a split schedule? Do you have everybody's analyzing everything they do and say, what are you doing? What are we doing? They're looking for a pattern they can steal. Hey, are you looking for ministry from God? Hey, steal this pattern. Every single one of them were thankful people. Yes. You like that pattern? Oh, you'll go somewhere with it. Psalms 30, Lord, you brought me up out of the out of hell, it says there. Sheol is the Hebrew word for hell. You kept me alive that I should not go down to the boar, the pit. The Bible teaches there's pits in hell. Imagine that. People are in pits in hell. Golly, what a drag. Sing, you saints, and give thanks. thanks. I'm noticing a pattern here. I'm getting it. I'm thinking about it. I'm focusing on it. Psalm 50, offer to God thanksgiving and pay your vows to the Most High. Call upon me in the day of trouble. I will deliver you. Wow. Oh. The, the devil's filling his depends right now. <laughs> he doesn't want this information out. He's freaking right now. He is pitching a fit. The demons are shaking in their boots right this second. Because they know I'm handing you the ticket to paradise. Yeah. No, any money's not here. I'm here. God's worth it. I'm giving you the ticket to winning. It's that pattern every one of them had. They were all grateful. Some of the great ministers of the gospel fell. It's as common as anything in the world. You know what one of the patterns was? They stopped being grateful. They started taking stuff for granted. When you take stuff for granted, you're not grateful for it. Human nature. When you reach that point, uh-oh, hell's coming to your house. Things are going to go really bad for you because you started taking God's blessings for granted. First Corinthians 15, thanks be to God who always gives us victory. What's accompanying the victory? Thanks again. A grateful person wins. First Corinthians 2, thanks be to God who always causes us to Triumph. Why was Paul so powerful? Let um, me think about it. Mm, he was a grateful person. How in the world did I come up with that pattern? I must be a genius. Well, it didn't take a genius to read the story of Paul and Silas in the prison. They're sitting there in the stocks. Those things were very painful. They deliberately spread you out so far that it was killing you, and the stocks were tearing into your ankles. You're stuck in chains in a dungeon. There's no light down there. There's no bathrooms. The whole place smells like a toilet. They're sitting there praising God and thanking Him for 
the feces Listen, you are a powerful man and woman of God when you can thank God for feces <laughs> Trust me on that one just trust me on it. Paul was a super powered Holy Ghost man of God why this guy had thanks down pat What's missing from your spiritual life it's so easy to see Psalms 119 at midnight I will give rise to thanks You have insomnia some nights you get up You turn on a rerun of Jerry Springer it, That's not gonna work Watching Jerry Springer no Watching an old John Wayne movie that's not gonna cut this thing okay? You get up in the middle of the night you're into your thankful mode Thank you For your righteousness Lord your judgments Psalms 26 that I may publish with a voice of Thanksgiving While I tell of all your wonderful works you see once you get Complacent with the blessings of God. That's when you think you're okay, but you're actually sinking and you don't even know it it's very similar in the military to being being in what they call a kill box in the military They have airline surveillance Over certain areas they want to blow up and there's people in those areas coming in and out of buildings They don't know they're being watched and if they're gonna blow that whole area up, They call that a kill box The people in the kill box don't know they're there As soon as the good things of God become something you're taking for granted, they become just like another thing. You fell into a kill box, you don't even know it. God's not gonna kill you. The demons are gonna come for you. They'll kick your face in. No offense. Sing to the Lord, Psalms 30, and give thanks. Remembering his holiness look at that Luke 17 Jesus entered a certain village and many the lepers standing over there They lifted up their voices and said Jesus master have mercy on us. Everybody's read this story, right? It's a great story when he saw them he said go show yourselves to the priests That was the fastest healing service in history He didn't even pray for him You'd be surprised what would happen to your life if you just decided to obey you would be absolutely shocked But to obey you got to take your Self off the throne of decision-making. Oh, that's hard to do for a Christian. That ain't gonna happen And you got to listen and do what you're told oh gosh yeah. Do what I'm told that's like Ebola to a Christian. Oh my god No they just stopped and turned around and were headed back to town for the synagogue and As they went they were cleansed and this is one of them When he saw he was healed turned back and came back to give what? Thanks. Say thank you listen if you want to mount to something special for God you have to develop these skills I'm sharing with you right now if you don't develop them, you're not going anywhere You're gonna end up a spiritual failure for the rest of your life but if you receive these this training tonight, you will be in the minority yeah. Ten lepers one came back Go on, Amen. If you decide to be a Holy Ghost monster for God if you decide and few people do You're gonna have to develop these skills This is a skill set you can't lose Ten lepers were cleansed only one of the lepers was made whole Only one of them Had the skill set he came back and gave Thanks Jesus said where are the other ones those the ten were cleansed where, where's the rest where's the other nine? Wow Did you know that when you say thank you Jesus? It's the same as glorifying it Thanksgiving is glorification Come 
one naturally flows from the other it's unnatural Did you know you can have Thanksgiving glossa tongues? Did you know that? Oh, all right. God told me several years ago that I was going to get a deliverance revival here. First one in the history of America, a deliverance revival. And Oh, I had some doubts about it when I was in the hospital, but about halfway through the hospital say I'd snapped out of it I repented I was man. I was down low in the hospital Whew, and I was low but I repented and One of my ideas for this revival. It's sheer genius. It's all up here Is to have a choir I want to have a choir when this revival starts, what kind of choir? Mormon Tabernacle? No. I'm going to have a Glossa choir. The only one in the history of America. Yeah. 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 Nobody's going to believe it. Nobody. We're going to have a giant choir singing in tongues like you ain't going to believe. People will be so shocked. And the other people will be so mad <laughs> But as soon as it hits everybody's gonna be copying it all over the country glow wires will spread like wildfire I will be famous That's right I'll become a famous person. I don't need you guys anymore Queen for dollar limo Kenneth Copeland Olympic pool uh-huh or Robert's toilet gold. I got everything. This glow acquire is going to kill you, and you, it's going to have a conductor. What's the person that stands out and does that? What's that person? Conductor. The conductor. Yeah. It's going to have a glow conductor. Who are those people? I don't know. I got to recruit them, but I. There they are. That's the symbol. But anyway, First Corinthians fourteen. If I pray in a glossa. My spirit is praying, but my noose, my mind, is unfruitful. What do I do then? I will pray in glossa with the spirit, and I will pray with my mind. Right? I'm talking with my mind right now, teaching these scriptures. Right? I'm using English, Spanish, whatever you use. That's using your mind. Paul said, I'll pray with my mind. Dear Lord, help so and so. Then he said, I will also pray in the spirit. Rendo motion baba. Right? So then he says, I will sing with the spirit, glossa choir, and I will sing with the with my mind. I'll sing a song in English or Spanish or whatever. Back then it would have been Hebrew or Aramaic, you know, whatever they were singing. And then it says, First Corinthians 14, when you bless someone with the spirit, what's he talking about there? Same Greek word, Urugel. He's, he's talking about when you per, when you're pronouncing gratefulness and thanksgiving over to God in the spirit You're saying thanks in the spirit He says How shall he that occupies the room of the unlearned Say amen at your giving thanks What was he saying there? Well, that was the section of text where he was trying to get him to see that there's a difference between the gift of tongues and the your prayer language worship language gift of tongues Every Christian is to have that gift of tongues very few Christians have that gift of tongues The gift of tongues to give a message in, in church is a special gift of the Spirit. It's one of the nine gifts and very few people have that gift Everybody has their own personal edification gift of glossa Any Christian can have that gift. Not every Christian can have the other gift. This gift is the giving of thanks gifts. Now, what is the room of the unlearned? That's the Greek word idiotes, where we <laughs> we get our English word 
<laughs> How does she know that so quickly? <laughs> Something wrong. Now listen. What he was saying there was people like the scribes and Pharisees and other people, Baptists and different were scoffers. Okay, so they're idiots, meaning they're not their IQs are not low, but they're ignorant. What he was saying, ignorant is different from being an idiot. Don't raise your hand, but someone can be ignorant over something, but not be an idiot. They can be a very intelligent person. They're just not versed in that area. So Paul is saying these people in the room and the unlearned. I've been in that room several times over the years. Uh, there they are. They don't know what's going on. See, but you're giving thanks. You're doing a good job giving thanks. But he says, if you're using your thank you gift in Glossa, people who are there or listening to you don't understand what you're saying. He's saying. See that? And they are not edified because they don't know what you're doing. They don't know what's going on. Right? So I thank God I speak with Glossa more than all of you. How'd that go? Yeah, Anybody mad at me? There's a difference between messages in tongues and your gift of glosa, which every Christian can have and wants it. The Christians who don't want it cannot have it. God will not give it to you if you don't want it. In fact, all of these gifts all work on a volunteer basis. You have to want the gifts. You have to want to serve. You have to want to be saved. You have to want to be healed. God's not going to force you to be healed. It's all volunteer work. Here's where the Bible study gets nasty. <sighs> Let me take a breath here. All right. <clears throat> Ephesians 5. Giving thanks always for all things to God, the Father, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, First Thessalonians 5, in everything give thanks, for this is God's will. And in America, here's where the whole system crashes. Christianity crashed. That's why there are no powerful Holy Ghost people roaming around Phoenix. They got big mouths and they can talk a good game. They don't have the anointing to back it up. Bad things always happen for good reasons. Everybody gets them. Nobody is excluded. Bad things happen. God allows things to happen. The devil does things. I do things and then I sow bad and then I reap crap. It happens to everybody. All Christians. However, the crash comes in when you're not thankful for the bad things. Yeah, that happened to me about halfway through my hospital stay. I was in a bad mood. I got moody. It's unusual for me. And things were not going my way. Whew. And I was miserable until I snapped out of the thing. I had to snap out of it and repent. What am I doing? Bad things piss Christians off. It ruins them. The root cause of it is frustration. Bad things are frustrating. Financial. Spiritual. I lost my healing. I lost my job. I lost my house. I lost my wife. I lost my kids. Bad things always happen, but it always happens for good reasons. That's why Paul was telling you to be grateful for bad things. So you can get healed. That's why the devil dumps crap on you. He's gambling. He'll start griping and complaining and they'll get mad at God. Let's dump it on him. 
and it works. He wins. This method guarantees you victory. Romans 12. Therefore, if your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he's thirsty, give him something to drink. In so doing, you shall heap coals of fire on his head. Quoted out of Proverbs. What's this verse mean? It sounds so nuts. Christians aren't supposed to heap coals of fire on people's head. No, they're not. He's talking about the Lord there. If you will be thankful for somebody dumping on you and trashing you, running you down, criticizing you, the Holy Ghost will fight for you. If you join in and you begin to complain and gripe and moan, he backs up. That's not talking about the Christian dumping coals on. It's talking about the Holy Ghost dumping coals of fire on the devil. Matthew 5, blessed are you when men shall, number one, on a deed zone. What? <laughs> trash you. You ever had anybody trash you? Gosh, you can't even be a living human without that happen. Sooner or later, somebody's going to criticize you or tear you down, or run you down, cut you out. That's just humanity. When somebody does that, verbally abuses you. Number two, you are blessed when you're verbally abused. What? You got to be kidding. See, the problem here is none of this makes sense for a person who's a human. It makes no sense. Donald Trump. If you say one bad thing about the poor guy, instead of letting it go, he fights, fires right back. Boom. Okay? But if you want to be great for God with an incredible anointing of the Holy Ghost, you have to be the opposite of Donald. He's in politics. That's another world. You're a minister of the gospel, of the glorious riches of Christ. You don't act like them. You act like Son of God, correct? I know this sounds nuts, but when somebody verbally abuses you, you must take it as a blessing. <laughs> I know. Number two, Yoko, when they pursue you with negative things, you know, happens a lot in marriages. You ever been in one of those arguments? You're having an argument, and you go, boy, i got to get out of here. And you go into that room, they follow you in yelling at you. Not a lot of single people here tonight. But anyway, if you get married, what's going to happen is you'll have an argument in this room. You'll retreat to that room. They'll follow you in there yell at you. That's what that's talking about. Pursuing you with negativity. And number three, oh, wow. Say all kinds of negative things about you behind your back that aren't true. What's he saying there? Listen, if you want the Holy Ghost anointing, you have got to develop what my grandpa used to call thick skinned. Got to be a little thick skinned, he said. You can't just take it and take an offense over somebody, somebody trashing you. When they say negative things about you behind your back. Mm -hmm. Yeah, some good some gal called me. They said, hey, I was just in a prayer meeting at Skyway Church in Goodyear. I said, oh, that's good. I know some people out there. Oh, they don't like you. They said you you don't use the name of Jesus when you cast demons out of people over there, over here. She told the whole group that.
What's that? That's this. Somebody says something about you, and you don't you, you get some thick skin there. You just let it go. I'm not going to drive over there and threaten a lawsuit. <laughs> Bring them a tape warning services. Did you hear me say in the name of Jesus? Did you? Hey, you just blow. It. See, if you're going to be in the ministry, you're going to get hit with fiery darts continuously. <laughs> Constantly from demons constantly and Jesus said hey listen the gospel will never go one inch if you're taking an offense at everybody and The devil's gonna he's the accuser of the brethren. He's gonna trash you behind your back like you won't believe That's what he does naturally And you can't react to it you can't take that stuff. You must consider it a blessing Now it says rejoice Cairo means be cheerful about it. I know This is a this doesn't seem Real doesn't seem real. I get that I read supernatural and supernatural things don't seem real That's why they call them miracles They don't make any sense okay? but if you'll take these people attacking you and Put a Holy Ghost spin on the thing you will see victories you're not going to believe. God will fight for you. He will heap coals of fire on your enemy's head if you will just be blessed while they persecute you, while they verbally abuse you. The problem is, born again Christians, they think they're God's gift to something. And as soon as somebody trashes them, they go, Boy, you, you're not going to talk to me like that. What? That is exactly the wrong attitude. Hey, people that are thankful also have another trait that comes to them naturally. You know what it is? Cheerfulness. They are naturally cheerful. For no reason. Apparent reason. They're just grateful people. Gratefulness breeds Cheerfulness Same Greek word there it is again same thing Jesus did a galiao leaping for joy and laughing and weeping <laughs> I know You're not believing this I didn't believe it when I read it originally either. I see you got to be kidding. This doesn't make any sense These people are trashing me and I'm supposed to be happy about it Yes, because behind the scenes the Holy Ghost is working the whole situation out for your good all things work together for good To those who love God and those who are called His purpose Why do you think the devil created ex-wives and ex-husbands <coughs> to trash you and get you to take an offense and take in a wound and stop you from becoming an anointed disciple of God? Because he knows it will stop you. Because let's face it, let's be honest about it. Almost everybody's parents are kooks. <laughs> you ever notice that? I mean, occasionally you run into a few good ones. Oh yeah, they're they're out there, but basically, you know, they're dysfunctional. Yeah, very seldom do ex spouses just can't wait to see each other again. How you doing? I hope everything's going well. No, generally speaking, it's going to go the other way. He or she is going to say something to the kids that's not true about the other spouse. They're going to stab in the back. What's the Holy Ghost telling you here? Listen, Cairo, be cheerful and be exceedingly glad. Why? Why is that? Because you're being rewarded for obeying.
Yeah, happens to me every once in a while. Not often, thank God. Somebody gets mad at me in a counseling session. Oh, they blow their stacks. And they leap to their feet in front of my desk. I usually say something that triggers something. You know, I'm sitting behind my desk talking to them. That's what counselors do. They talk to people. And I say something, something triggers inside of them. Oh boy. <coughs> what? They stand up in front of my desk. They look right down at me. I know who they're talking to. It's usually just me and them in the room anyway. They start yelling at me. Oh! What do I do? I just let it run. You're a liar. You're this. You're that. You mother. You did. I just wait for them to poop themselves out. Here, sit down again. Have a seat. Well, you can imagine what my life would be like if I took that personal. Can you imagine that? Every night I'd get home, drop kick the dog, slap the wife. I'd be in a bad mood all the time. That would steal my joy. Don't you? Don't, aren't you getting this thing, folks? Don't you see how God's words telling you? Cheerfulness over negativity is your key to victory. Your key to the anointing is your key to being great for God. You can be great for God. Nobody likes these kids. They're all jumping for joy. Why is that? Well, because the Bible said so, and they're getting a reward in heaven. There you go. Everybody thinks these people suck. And they're so happy. They're cheerful. Why? They see the big picture. Okay? I saw the big picture of the person yelling at me. I'm seeing the big picture. There. If you don't catch the big picture, the devil's going to catch you. Because he sees the big picture very clearly. What are you supposed to do? What's the practical aspect of this? All right, let's do it together. Psalms 92. It's a good thing to give thanks to the Lord and sing praises almost high. Hebrews 13. Jesus, therefore, let us offer the sacrifice of praise to God continually. That's when things are going bad and when they're going good. You see, there's no qualifier here. It's everything. Everything goes bad. You give thanks for. Colossians 3, whatever you do in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God. What, you, what, is, what good is that scripture? Well, it covers your mistakes. Mistakes are a wonderful friend of yours. Screwing up is a blessing. Why? Because you learn so much from it. It helps you. Mistakes are good things. Mistakes allow you to help others. What's your problem? Oh, it's this and that. Oh, gosh, I had the same problem. You know what? I screwed up this way and that way. Then I got it right. Here's what I did. Click, click, click. Boom. You just helped another person because you screwed up. You mean that's a good thing to be a screw up? No, not a screw up, but you screwed up. There's a difference between being a screw up and screwing up. Ask anybody who's had any kids. <laughs> Psalm 35, I will give thanks in the great congregation. I will praise you among many people. If you go to the mega church, no one's praising until the music starts. That, uh, that's not it. You praise without being told to do it. You praise without having a Grammy Award winning band. That's real praise. 
when you don't have any music. Yeah, I'll admit it's easier to praise with music. I like music. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving. Notice that praise always follows thanksgiving. Notice that cheerfulness always follows being grateful. It's amazing how that works. It works naturally that way. Be thankful and bless his name. How can you change your prayer life immediately? Okay? Next week or the week after, if you do this, you'll notice a significant change in your prayer life. It happens within days. Within days. Okay? Here it is. Let's close our Bible study with Philippians chapter 4. Are you ready? Maramnao means to be anxious or worry. Do not be anxious or worrying for anything. In everything by prayer and supplication. Deasis is the Greek word for uh, making a list. What Santa does. He makes a list and he checks it twice. There it is. Lord, I need this, that, this, that, this, that, this. And I'm praying over my supplication. Right? You have more than one need, and it's a deus. And it says, this all must be done with thanksgiving. The things you're praying for are usually bad things. Correct? I need a job, I need a house, I need heal mother, heal, heal, right? These are all things that need to be fixed, usually. Not all of them, but many of the things on your deus, your list, need to be fixed. Correct? What he's saying there is these bad things on your list, your medical problems, your financial problems, your physical problems, your spiritual problems, all this, are to be grateful for. Most people are anxious about these things. Oh God, I hope the prayer comes in before that day. Oh, I hope I hope God blesses him before that. Oh, I hope he's healed before the surgery. Most of the time there's some anxiety about these prayer requests, which then blocks the answer. The answer is blocked. Be anxious or worry about nothing but in everything, good and bad. Deuses, your list, your needs, your wants, your desire, whatever they are. In that list, you must pray with thanksgiving. I want you to go home tonight and pull out a paper and write down the top five or six crappy things in your life that you've been praying about for God to answer for you. Okay, I want you to go home tonight and make a list like Santa Write it out That you've been praying to God to help you with or answer Prayers that have not been answered. Don't put a prayer on there. That's already been answered. Duh Put one on there. That's not answered And instead of praying like you normally do Thank God for this mess Thank you for the foreclosure. You got a better house waiting for me. Thank you for my uh, getting fired. You got a better job for me. Go down the list and thank him for every screwed up thing on the list. Guess what you'll get? Wow! Peace! Oh, that's going to be okay. I see it now. Yeah, all these things are going to be answered. I, I'm going to be healed. I'm going to, there's the job. Here's the oh, okay. Don't you see it? Don't you see the pattern? You got to follow a pattern. 
don't be anxious about anything but in everything by prayer and supplication let your requests with thanksgiving be made known unto God it didn't say make the request known unto God without thanksgiving you've been praying wrong stop praying like you're praying it doesn't work I was laying in the hospital about five days in, six days in. I don't know what it was. It was after my lung surgery. I'm going, wow. I don't know. Maybe I'm not going to make it. What am I going to do? I started thinking, well, so I could give the ministry to Kelly or Rick or somebody else. What am I going to do with the building? What am I going to Who's what? I, next day or something. Click. Hey, what am I doing? Stupid. I started to have my stupid anointing come back. I used to have a massive stupid anointing, but I beat the thing down. It started coming back at me in the hospital. I started going, wacko. I said, Lord, listen, I've changed my mind. I don't know what's going on here, but something good. It's going to turn out good. I, I don't see it. I don't feel it. Something's going to happen. Yeah. I repented of it. Thank you. Yeah, it's hard to thank God for hospitals and nurses and doctors. It's difficult because basically you're kind of a a non-person to them. They've got hundreds of others. Okay, I get that. I'm a counselor. I've had hundreds of others. The peace of God will follow you if you will submit your request to God with thanksgiving first. Okay, and the peace of God that makes no sense noose in your mind it makes none of this makes any sense in your mind Everything I've taught you today makes no sense None of it makes any sense To be cheerful and happy over somebody calling me a rotten SOB Yeah, I, I get that that's doesn't make any sense to me either But that's how the spirit world operates And if you want to be an anointed powerful man or woman of God you got to come over to God's side and see things as he sees them. You cannot continue to operate like you see them. It will not work. Every one of these things, no anxiety, no worry, nothing. I know it's going to happen. I'm thankful I have this. I'm thankful I got that. I'm thankful that went bad. I'm thankful this is wrong because I know you're going to take care of it, Lord. Thank you. And it breeds peace. It breeds cheerfulness. It changes your attitude about everything. You suddenly start to see yourself winning. Victory. And it shall do what? For real. It will stand guard over your na'ama. Thoughts. That process will change your way of thinking you will have a renewed mind you will develop the mind of Christ This process of handling your needs Will give you the mind of Christ if you submit each request with thanksgiving and repent of worrying It will keep your hearts and minds Naama is thoughts through Jesus Christ our Lord. There's all things you can be thankful for, of course. You've been saved so long, you're now taking it for granted. Oh man, dude, you're in a bad spot. You're in a bad spot, you need to repent of it tonight. Dear God, hey, instead of going to God with constantly asking him for stuff, just repent of that and go in with thanks. There's all kinds of things you can thank him for if you just stop for a second and think about it. Listen, your future is something to be grateful for. All the bad things that happen in life, and life is not easy. Everybody has it tough here and there. Everybody does. Nobody skates through life. Period. No Christian skates through life. That's not going to happen. But listen, in the future, you will never cry a tear of sorrow ever again. 
Never. Never. God will wipe away all your tears. Listen now. Uh, you can be so grateful that God never left you and never had a thought about leaving you. Even when you were mad at him. Even when you gave him a good cussing. Yeah, you did that one time. You remember that? I know you remember it. You cussed him out good. You were mad, frustrated, tired, exhausted, pooped. Yeah, I know. We all get that way. Everybody gets. It's called a human. Human beings have weaknesses. They have flaws. They have Grace covers this. If you repent of it, it's covered by grace. Mercy covers you. Mercy covers you. Thankfulness and praise are the greatest things in the world. Any questions? Before we close. Thank you. Thank you. It's not a question, but I'll take it. Any over here? If you just adjust your mind through the Word of God and see your needs as opportunities to say thank you, and you're going to start tonight, and within a, within a week or two, <coughs> You will notice significant things removed off that list. You will be shocked. What are you going to do? You're going to stop worrying. You're going to thank God for your bad things. Hello? You're going to thank God for your bad things. You're going to stop taking offense to others and be cheerful when they trash you. I tell you what, that's a Holy Ghost challenge of enormous proportions when you got an abusive spouse because you got to live with them. But where sin abounds, grace does that much more abound. Okay? And if you will change the way you pray and stop praying like you've been praying, Lord, I need this, I need this Thursday. Oh, God, in the name of Jesus. Oh, Jesus. That's an anxious prayer. See? I'm praying an anxious prayer there because there's a deadline and I'm fearing that deadline it scares me a little bit so I'm putting a little extra oomph on the Lord and I'm intensely giving it to him no that's that's not a prayer that prayer is not gonna work because you think you're praying right but you're praying with anxiety if you pray with anxiety the prayers aren't answered it says, be anxious about nothing. They brought Smith Wigglesworth, a man dying of stomach cancer. They rolled him in on a gurney, for crying out loud. They told him what was wrong. Be gentle with him. If you move him at all, his pain shoots through his body. Oh my God, he's in bad shape. They told Wigglesworth, they, go easy on this dude. He's, he's dying, he's in bad shape. Wigglesworth Never said a word to him. Walked up to the guy and went, boom! Slugged the guy in the stomach. The guy died. They hauled him out of there. Everybody yelling at him. You psycho, you cruel person. You're this and that. Wigglesworth wasn't anxious. The buddy went on to the next person. Guy woke up in the ambulance on the way to the hospital. Sat up. What's going on? Perfectly healed. Now look, we don't we don't do that here because uh, there are personal injury lawyers roaming around Phoenix looking looking to, for an option. So, but that doesn't matter. You don't have to slip. The point I'm trying to make is he had no anxiety about. He had perfect peace in his faith in God, and he felt very comfortable. He was anxious for nothing, but he had already through prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, prayed for the sick and the disabled and cancer, and boom! Yes. Cancer demon come out. Yes. See? It's an extreme illustration for this glorious truth. If you will change the way you pray and start being thankful for your crap and start seeing your crap 
as a blessing from God Brother Mike this is the craziest sermon in the history of Christianity. I know it is no one on YouTube is gonna believe this your crap is your blessing if you take your defeats your losses your failures your screw everything on that list and be thankful for each one of them okay God will answer the prayer and then you, it becomes a testimony it's no longer something on the prayer list it's now a testimony oh I had this problem but now this is what happened How'd you do that? Well, I heard this insane teaching at the Deliverance Center about seeing my problems as something to be thankful for. And the idiot got it out of the Bible. Don't remember the guy's name. And I began to see, wait a minute, this the devil has got me. I've been complaining and been anxious and worrying about stuff. And I happen to notice on this list that I've been praying for that one for two years, this one a year and a half, that one for ten, this one for six. I notice that these things are not coming off my list. I've been praying for them for years. And I got it that night. I'm I'm to be thankful for that. I'm gonna offer that to God as a thanksgiving praise and a sacrifice of praise. Thank you, Jesus, for my failures. God, God, forgive me for taking an offense at them. My God, thank you for helping me see that all things work to my good, including the crap spouse, the psycho kids, the idiot boss, all these people. I see it now, Lord. My God, I saw that scripture Brother Mike shared. It just got a hold of me. I saw a pattern there. Brother Mike was talking about patterns. I'm seeing a pattern there. He's right. No anxiety. Pray with thanksgiving. And I'll have peace over things that are bad in my life, knowing that they're going to be fixed. So I can be at peace knowing that's covered. I see it now. I had the whole thing screwed up. I was praying thinking I was doing something godly and I was actually wasting my time Monster. I see it now I was praying anxious prayers Lord you gotta help me I'm not getting any older I I'm alone when am I gonna get married when am I gonna whoa put that on your list here shell it and the Holy Ghost will fix it. Yes. Sir. If you chill, he'll fix. Amen. This is how the spirit world works. You say, well, nobody in their right mind would teach something like this. Well, that part's partially true, but if you're able to grasp these truths, the benefits are staggering. And you're going to see it in the next week or two. And you come down here and ask Karina or Kelly, and you're going to give your testimony. You come down here, we'll set up testimonies that you started being thankful yes. for the crappy person the devil sent you, for this failure, for that loss, for that sin, for that screw up. Every single one of them. Write them on that list. You have to write them down so you can see them. Okay, you can't just put them in your head and memorize. It. No, don't do that. You have to write it down so you can see it. And each one of them, you bring that sheet in here and give it to them, and we'll have testimony time. And you'll see your prayers, old prayers, getting answered because you were grateful. Yes, you were grateful. All right, let's pray then. Father God, Nothing made sense in this Bible study to the human mind, but to the great mind of the Holy Ghost and divine wisdom, it makes perfect sense. I see it now. It's, it's a move of faith. I see the pattern. It's a faith pattern. 
and it's not possible to please you without having faith Lord I thank you for that and tonight I'm going to thank you for the things that are bad in my life so I can get each of them removed from my list I want to thank you in the name of Jesus I want to thank you for every bad thing in my life every bad thing every one of them thank you Jesus thank you Jesus thank you Jesus What's the worst thing that happened to you this year, 20, 2018? What was it? What was the worst thing that happened to you? Hey Amen. What's the worst thing that happened to you? 2018. My son just left me. Doesn't want to talk to me. Your son abandoned you? Yeah. All right. Hey, how about you, sir? What's the worst thing that happened to you in 2018? Oh, probably more of the same. Just Your son you know, left you? No. No, more of the same um, un 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 unanswered prayers that I haven't What's the major one? For. Major one is my neck. Oh, you got neck pain? Yeah, spine. Oh, excellent. Excellent. What happened to you, sir? I have not remained faithful to the Lord. All right. Did anybody hear those requests, uh, those uh, statements? Those were fantastic. Okay, now I'm going to pretend I'm those three people right now, and I'm going to show them what to do, exactly what to do. Father God, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, I come to you and I thank you that my son turned his back on me. I thank you that he left me. I thankful you. He betrayed me. All the good things I've done for him all these years went right out of his mind and he just walked out on me Lord my neck's been hurting for years I've had everybody in town pray for my neck and it's not healed and I realized today something was blocking my healing and I thank you for it I thank you for that neck pain I thank you for everything that hurts in my neck and I praise you for it, Lord. I thank you. I'm lifting this up to you with no anxiety or worry. I'm just saying thank you. I'm lifting my son up to you with no anxiety or worry. I'm just saying thank you. Thank you, Lord. Lord, I thank you that I have not been faithful this year. I have failed you many times in 2018. Oh, I let you down. I let you down. I got mad at you. I got mad at myself. I got mad at other people. I got mad at Brother Mike. I got mad. I got hurt. I thank you for that. Today, I'm putting that on my list. I know you're going to take care of it. Because someday, I'm going to be able to bless someone else who is struggling with faithfulness. They can't be faithful. And I'm going to be able to help them Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for that. I praise you for it. I give you thanks. If I'd have never had a problem, I would have never known that God could solve. I would have never known what faith in God could do. That's what Andre Crouch said years ago. Through it all, I learned to trust in Jesus. I learned to trust in God. So I repent right now every negative thought I had about my neck every negative thought I had about my son every negative thought I had about me chronically failing I repent of it right this second I repent of it right now I repent of it every negative thought I had about that person at work about that person in my family I repent of it right now and I thank you. I thank you 
for their failures. I thank you for them abusing me. I thank you for them saying negative things about me. I give it to you, Lord. I hand my wife over to you. My kids. Thank you. Thank you for all the trouble I've had. All the pain I've had in my life. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Now, at last, I know you're going to take care of my son. He's going to find an altar someday. Fall on his knees and get filled with the Holy Ghost. He's going to come back to me and apologize. Mom, I'm so sorry I hurt you. Sorry I abandoned you. I'm going to be spinning my neck around like you won't believe someday. Thank you, Lord. I now have the peace of God that passes all understanding, all human knowledge. I'm doing exactly what the devil told me not to do. And from now on, everything he tells me to do, I will do the opposite. I will do the opposite in the name of Jesus. And yeah, what do you think of that prayer? Really hmm? Useful on me. You gonna do it? Yes. And then close your eyes right now. Dear Jesus, thank you for my son hurting me. Thank you, he abandoned me. Come on. Thank you, Lord. Say it. Come on. Go. Thank you, Lord. Say it. Come on, sweetheart. Yeah, the demons are trying to shut you down right now. No, they're not gonna. Say it. Just obey. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for. Thank you for. <clears throat> Say it. Come on. Come on. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for what? Thank you for it. Come on, sweetheart. Say it. Thank you for my son leaving me. Say it. Let your tears go. Come on. Thank you for my son leaving. There you go. Thank you for him abandoning me. Thank you for him for abandoning me. There you go. Thank you, Jesus. I release my son to you now. Come on. You say it. Thank you, Jesus. Raise your hands. Thank you, Lord. Thank tell him, you. tell him you love him. You're going to thank him for doing that. Come on now. Thank you, Jesus. Hey, how'd you like that prayer I prayed over there? Or you, what do you think of it? It's mind blowing. I believe it. You do believe it. I believe it. Watch, watch this. Go ahead and repent and pray over it. Lord, I repent right now for every single complaint that I've made for the last two years since I woke up two years ago for some unknown reason with a weird neck issue and I've asked so many times for healing but thank you Jesus right now I'm just putting it in your hands and I'm thanking you for whatever you want to do with it glory and God. you'll be getting the glory thank you Jesus. when you answer it on your time Thank you, Jesus. Go ahead. Thank you, Lord. Did you hear me pray? Yeah. Yes. Go ahead and repent of it. Go ahead and repent. I'm so sorry. Thank I'm you, so Jesus. sorry every time I failed you. Thank you for your failures. Come on. Come on. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Come on. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for your failures. Thank you for the past. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Come on. Lord. Pray harder. Let Thank your you, tears Lord. go. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Now, you happen to notice the Holy Ghost is falling on those three people? You know why he's falling over there? Because they obeyed. To obey is better than sacrifice. In the blood of many lambs. You see that? The Spirit of God moved right over to those people and jumped right on them because they obeyed. They were listening. 
Okay? They saw the scripture up there and they changed. Okay? Thank you, Jesus, for all the bad things in my life. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hey, what's the worst thing that happened to you in 2018? Um, I tried drugs. You tried drugs? Yeah. What kind? Cocaine. When was that? Um, it was a week ago. I was drinking and around by the company and something just <coughs> happened and I tried it. Okay. Dear Jesus, thank you so much for that failure of taking drugs. I tried coke. <coughs> The demons, some of the demons got in when I used it, and I thank you for that. I reaped sin. I sowed spirits. I thank you for this learning experience and for my failure. I thank you, Lord. And right now, I repent of looking at myself negatively, criticizing myself. I thank you for my failure. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hey, what's the worst thing you did last year? Um, it, it was actually just recently. I relapsed on drugs after being about eight months clean. And I thank God that it happened because I know he's going to use it for his glory. Amen. I know that, Lord, I thank you, Lord. I thank you in Good. Jesus' precious name that, that this happened because you, I know how you work, Lord. And I know that you're doing something through me. Thank you, Jesus. Something strong. And this is going to prepare me to help others, to help others out there that might be going through the same thing, that might be yeah. about to go thank through the same Jesus. thing. And I thank you for that, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Now, thank to you, make Jesus. sure that it doesn't happen again, raise your hands. Just breathe out of your mouth now. We got to get the lust demons out of there. We got to get the spirits out that pushed you to do drugs. Thank you, Lord, that I failed. Thank you, Jesus. I blew it. For my failures are now my treasures. My failures are my treasures. Thank you, Jesus. Okay, indeed, you come out of there right now. Get that thing out of there. If you repented, you're in line for a miracle. What was it? Um, drinking heavily, and I compromised my liver, and I also declared bankruptcy, so financial okay. problems. Okay, raise your hands. Say thank you, Jesus, for each one of them. Come on. Thank you, Lord. I relapse on alcohol. Drinking heavily. Thank you, Jesus. Adrenal fatigue, stage three. Adrenal fatigue, stage three. Adrenal fatigue? Okay. Did you used to hate was, yourself when you were younger? I don't remember hating myself, but I was hated by my father and my brothers. Oh, your brothers and your dad hated you? Why'd they hate you? I have no idea, but I, right. I know that as a child, I, I, stopped, I stopped wearing dresses at like three and so oh. started wearing pants. And yeah, trying was, to please them. Trying to please them. Yep. Close your eyes. Here we go. Come on. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for my dad. Thank you for my dad. And thank you for his abuse of me and my brother's abuse. Thank you for what went bad. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Come on, say it. Louder, say thank you, Jesus. I'm so glad everything happened to me that was bad this year. I thank you for it. I thank you for it. Thank you. You go with what happened to me? Uh, I got sick, but yeah. I got you got sick. sick? Yeah, I got sick and uh, it kind of made me like really angry because my body was in so much torment and it made me like kind of angry towards God even though I didn't want to be in the Go ahead. Come on. And, thank uh, you, Jesus. I'm so glad I got sick. Raise your Come on. I'm so glad I come out right now. Come on out. I'm so glad I got sick. I'm so glad I, I got angry. I failed and got angry. I failed and got angry. Come on out. Come on out there. Thank you for me. I got sick. The devil made me sick. And I took the bait. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. 
Thank you for my MS. Glory to God. I'm so glad. I'm cheerful. When my ex-husband left me, my husband left me, he divorced me. So glad, Lord. I'm so thankful, so grateful for having multiple sclerosis. So thankful for it. <laughs> so beautiful. Thank you, Jesus. How'd that go? Did you forgive your dad? I have. What was his name? Paulus. Paulus. Oh, no. You got the same name as your dad. Raise your hand. Thank you, Lord. But, but he gave me the same name, so those curses would come down on me. I'm not going to receive that. Thank you, Jesus, for my dad. Thank you for all the bad things he done to me. Thank you for all the rotten things my brothers did. Come on out. Spirit of rejection, come out right now. Rejection, come out. Here they go. Here they go. What's the worst thing? Happy um, having um, a blood clot in my juggler. Having what? A blood clot. Blood clot. Oh, okay. That's the worst thing. Raise your hand. Thank you, Jesus, for that blood clot. Hallelujah. Thank you for that blood clot, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you for that sickness. Thank you for that illness. Thank you for my sickness. Thank you for my illness. Thank you for my sickness. Thank you for all these bad things that have happened to me. So sorry. So sorry. So sorry. Come out of me right now, you demon of drugs. Spirit of drugs and rejection. Come out of me right now in the name of you. Come out of that body. Rejection. Thank you for multiple sclerosis. Thank you for muscular dystrophy. Thank you for ALS. Lord, we give you a praise. Thank you for my family turning on me. Thank you for my family attacking me. Thank you for them attacking me at the office. Thank you, God, for what you allowed to happen. It's going to turn out for my good. It's going to turn out for my good. Hallelujah. Thank you for blood clots. Thank you for neck pain. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. This teaching tonight, I mean, what about this mind boggling, that guy said. It was mind blowing. The Holy Ghost is, in fact, mind blowing. That's exactly what he is. Come on, YouTubers. Just repent of it. Repent of prayer and anxiety. Repent. Repent of certain negative things. Repent of getting frustrated with God because you're not here. Repent of it. God, forgive me for using food as a comfort. I should have used the Holy Ghost as a comfort. God, forgive me. God, forgive me. Forgive me for using food. The devil is trying to give me diabetes, high blood pressure, and a stroke. I renounce it. I renounce it in the name of the Lord. Thank you, Jesus, for all the bad things that have happened to me. All of them. Hallelujah. Thank you for my financial problems, the foreclosure, the divorce, the debts. Thank you for my failure, running up a bunch of debts on my credit cards. I blew it. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you that I blew it. Thank you. The people don't like me. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, my family turned on me. My son left me. My daughter left me. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, God. Thank you. Thank you. I'm fat. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you. I was never a great athlete. I was poor in school. Thank you. I got bullied in school. Thank you, Jesus. 
Glory to God. Through prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your request be made known to God. And the peace of God that passes all understanding will guard your hearts and your thoughts through Jesus Christ our Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I failed as a husband. I failed as a mother. I failed as a man. I'm so sorry. Oh God, I'm so sorry. And I thank you for it. I failed as a husband. Thank you. Someday I will help someone else who's failed as a husband. I failed as a as a wife. I failed. Thank you for that. I will be able to help someone else someday who's a failure as a wife. God have mercy on my soul. Father God, I will from my failures now. I learn from my sin. I repent of all this evil and all this sin. In Jesus' mighty name. Pull on YouTubers. Make your list out. Start it right now. Write it down. What's the worst thing that happened in 2018, 2017, 2016? Write it down. Childhood. What's the worst thing that happened to you in your childhood? Write it down. And thank God for it. Thank you. My parents were crazy. Thank you. My brother and sister, they were jealous of me. They hurt me. They mistreated me. God, forgive me for not being thankful for my failures and my losses. Oh, God. Save me, Lord. Save me, sweet Jesus. Have mercy, sweet Lord. Sweet Holy Spirit, I'm tired of my life. I want the anointing. I want the gifts, the nine gifts of the Spirit. I want you to pick those out that you want me to have and give them to me. But I must, I must change my mind into the thoughts of Christ. I cannot live with my own thoughts anymore. Lord God, forgive me, I pray. Have mercy upon my soul, I pray. Satan, come out of that man of God. Satan, come out of that man and woman of God in this building. Come out right now. Every filthy spirit, I command you. I command you in Jesus' mighty name. I bind your power. I bind your power. Witchcraft and sorcery, I bind your power. And now I command you to go. I command that spirit of infirmity to come out of that man's neck. The demon in that guy's neck. Spirit of infirmity, come out. I command the spirit of abuse and rejection from your childhood to come out right now in Jesus' mighty name. I command the demons of homosexuality and pedophilia. The demons of pedophilia. I curse you right now with failure. I command you. In Jesus' mighty name, I command you, you pedophile. Come out of that man of God. I command you, that pedophile. Come out of him. I command you, homosexuality. Come out. Homosexuality. I command you, adultery. Adultery, you pervert. Come out. In Jesus' mighty name. I command you, all sex. I bind your power. Come out. Right now. I command you, spirit that takes offenses. You offense taking spirit. I command you in the name of the Lord. I command you in Jesus' name. I repent of taking offenses against myself and against others. I repent of it. Go out. Come out of me. Every game is my dad and my brothers. I bind your power right now. Rejection spirits from childhood. Lost spirits from playboys when I was young. I found a stack of playboys in a spirit of lust in my body. I command this lust to come out right now. I bind you spirit of lust. I bind the lust in spirits from my grandfather. The demons from my grandfather. I take authority over those and I command those to come out of me. 
glorify those demons. Spirits, come on now. Right now. Spirit of infirmity for my dear father and my grandmother. Spirit of infirmity. Spirit of lust. Spirit of murder. I command the spirit of murder to come out right now. Every spirit in this room there's a murder spirit. I bind your power. Come on. Every spirit of murder on YouTube. In the name of Jesus. Come on. Get out of there. Come out of my body. Demon of death. Of multiple sclerosis. Spirit of death. Come out of that body. Come out of that body right now. Come out. Spirit of fear. You screaming demon, come out of there right now. Every generational curse, every generational vow of witchcraft, every evil spirit, all 32 of them from masonry, every familiar spirit from masonry, every one of them, I curse you to fail you. Come on! Come on! Every demon that molested a child, I'm taking authority over you right now. I command you out! Every spirit in this room that molested a child, you get out of that body. I'm calling you out, you pervert. Go! Come out now! Go out in Jesus' mighty name. Come out! Right now! Every spirit of drugs, pharmakia, witchcraft, sorcery, every demon of drugs from the world of witchcraft. Calling you out now, you rotten devil! Heroin, pot, the mind control spirits are uh, pot. I command you, come out. Mind control, mind control. Come out, mind control. Come out in Jesus' name. Heroin, spirit of death and heroin, I bind you. I bind you, demon of death and fentanyl. Fentanyl, I bind your power. Come out. Right now, come out. Oxycodone, I bind your power. Opiate addiction, I bind your power. I curse you to failure. Come out in Jesus' mighty name. Come on up. Get out of that body. Hurry up. Spirit of fear. Phobos. Spirit of cowardice. Galia. I bind your power. Come up. Shyness. Come up. Shyness. Come up. Shyness. I'm telling you. Come up. Come out of that body. Come out of that body. Come out of that brain. Get out of my head. Get out of my head right now, I said. Rejection from my son and my daughter. Rejection from my husband and my wife. I, I command that spirit to loose me right now. Loose me right now. I want you to know you are devil. Spirit, you have no more control over me. You have no more power over me. Demon of drugs, I want you out of my body. Demon of drugs, come on out. Come out, rejection, abandonment. Fear. Fear. Go. Come out right now. Go. Go in the name of the Lord. Come out of me. YouTubers, listen to me. Just get angry. Get angry and take command. Do it. Just say command. Satan. Satan. I bind your power. I command you. Come out. Come on, man of God. Come on, woman of God. Use your power. Use your authority. Fight back. Fight back. Don't roll over and take it. Spirit of infirmity, I want you out of my neck right this second. I can hear you. Come out of my vertebrae. Come out of my atlas and axis vertebrae. 
come out of my C1, C2, C3, C4, C5, C6, C7. Come out! Come out! Go on my neck! Come on! You can't take the devil lightly. You can't go easy on the devil. He's not going to go easy on you. He'll whip you every chance he gets. Come on, fight back now. I take authority over this spirit, my body, get him in his illness, and I come in here. Come on, let go! By the authority of the word of God. Come on! I am not anxious anymore. I do not worry over anything anymore. But with prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, with thanksgiving, I will make my request known unto God. And the peace of God that passes all knowledge of the human mind will guard my heart and my thoughts from Jesus Christ, the mighty Son of God. Praise ye the Lord and give glory to his name. You tempers, listen to me. If you will praise him over your failures, you will become successful. If you praise him over your losses, you will win. You will win. If you praise him for your sins, you will become holy. For the last shall be first, and the first shall be last. If you are faithful over a few things, the eternal God will make you ruler over many things. Just repent of it right now and take command of that devil. Satan of blindness, demon of blindness, I bind your power. Spirit, I command you, come out of my eyes right now. Go! Come out! Come out of my eyes! I command the spirit of failure to leave me right now. Spirit of failure, get out of my head. Stop talking to me. Stop lying to me. Father God, forgive me for all the pain I caused my family. Forgive me for all the pain I caused my family. Thanksgiving is the worst time of the year. God, forgive me. I thank you for my failures. I know you will fix it. I know you will fix it. Now, without faith, it is impossible to please God. And I reach out with my faith tonight, which pleases my Heavenly Father. And I receive my miracle tonight. I thank you for my losses, my beatings, my whippings, my rejection. My mother nagged me constantly when I was a child. She never hugged me. She never loved me. My dad ignored me when I was a kid. I thank you for that, Lord. But if, I, if I never had a problem, I would have never known that God could solve them. I would have never known what faith in God could do. So through it all, through it all, I learned to trust in Jesus. I learned to trust in God. I learned through the ministry of hard knocks. I learned to trust in Jesus. I learned. I learned to trust in God. Thank you, Jesus, for all my trials and temptations. Thank you for all my failures, my losses. Thank you for all my beatings. Thank you for all the things I ever learned the hard way. Thank you for my stubbornness, for I now repent of it and release it to you, Lord. I now receive the peace of God that passes all human knowledge. I receive it now in Jesus' mighty name. By the power of the Holy Ghost, by the word of God, thus saith the Lord. I saw those scriptures tonight, Lord, and I choose to believe them. I choose to accept them of my own free will. And tonight I will bring an offering of thanksgiving. I will bring an offering of thanksgiving. For in everything give thanks, 
for this is the will of God concerning you in Jesus Christ, my Lord. This is the will of God, that you give thanks for the good and the bad. Thank you, my son and daughter failed. They failed in school. They failed in, as a, in education. They failed in sports. They failed. They failed. They failed. They failed. They failed. They failed. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I'm no longer worried about my children. I know they will be cared for. I know the Spirit of the Lord has remembered them. So when I'm talking to you tonight, the Holy Ghost knows my children and He remembers them and there's nothing you can do about it. Tonight, I give praise. Praise to the Lord. Praise for all the failures and the losses. Praise for all the defeats. Hallelujah. And now tonight, I release my grief and my sorrow over to the Lord. I release grief and offenses to God. I took offenses of people. I got hurt by them. That was the sin. When Jesus said in John 16, I said all these things to you so you would not become offended. It is a sin to take an offense. And you're going to repent of it right now. I command the demon of offense blocking my healing to come out of me now. Come out. YouTube listeners, you may have some manifestations during this service. Coffee, coughing or hacking or vomiting or different things, shaking or screaming, whatever it is. Don't focus on the manifestation. Focus on casting the spirit out. Cast the spirit out. Don't focus on the manifestation. The demons use manifestation to distract everybody. Just fight through it. Spirit of fear, I command you to scream out of me. Keep screaming and be gone. Spirit of infirmity, get out of my neck and get out of my shoulders. I command you that I hate you. I command you to come out. Get out of my head. My pain, schizophrenia. Body and personality disorder. Every ugly spirit, I curse you, I command you to fall. Stop talking to me. Voices in my head. Voices in my soul. Stop talking to me. Get out. Right now, come out. Get out right now, I said. Go. For the peace of God that passes all understanding shall guard your hearts and your mind and your thoughts for Jesus Christ our Lord. Thanks be to God who always causes us to triumph in Christ. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thanks be to God who always brings us to victory in Jesus. You too, listen to me. If, you, if you've got a partial healing, don't worry about it. Keep going. Get the rest of your healing. If you're feeling a little better, that's okay. Keep going. Get the rest of your healing. The demons will fight you all the way to the end. That's fine. That's normal. That's normal. Thank you, Jesus, for doing fighting me because I'm learning spiritual warfare. YouTubers, all the ladies, I'm going to talk to you for, for a second. Ladies, listen to me. When you were young, you were hurt and wounded as a child. A spirit of rejection entered your brain, and you became promiscuous. You looked for love through relationships. You looked through lo for love through intimacy. That allowed other demons to enter your body. Those transfer spirits from bad men, from a rape, from fondling in childhood, from an anal rape, from being forced to perform oral sex on an older person. Those abuses open the door for demons and they entered your body and then they gave you the desire for promiscuity to make you feel better it was a trick the demons were telling you to sleep with everybody you could get your hands on because they wanted to add more spirits to you 
Just repent of it tonight, Father God, in the name of Jesus. I served the spirit of rejection and lust from childhood. I slept with so many men, I can't even count them anymore. All of them abandoned me, all of them betrayed me, all of them failed me. And tonight, I thank you for my failures and my sin. I ask for your forgiveness for all of these men I slept with. And now, in Jesus' holy name, I want all these lust demons and transfer spirits and rejection spirits and these spirits of infirmity and sickness out. I want them out. I want to command them to come out of me tonight. Out in the name of Jesus Christ. I repent of promiscuity and any sickness that entered my body from the man who had demons. Come on, ladies. You picked up a sickness from the man who had demons. Come out. Come out. You got drunk one night and you experimented in your sexuality. You had sexual activity with somebody of the same sex and picked up a transfer spirit, homosexuality, lesbianism. They got in your body. Tonight you're going to repent of it. Tonight you're going to release that ugly, perverted spirit now. Spirit, I come here, you come out now. Somebody molested you when you were a child, and when you grew up, you had some sexual desires for children. You picked up a transfer spirit from a pedophile in your childhood. Let's get that thing out of there. You got to use your authority to get that thing out of there. Let's get that thing out of there quickly. Quickly. Come on now. Get out of my body right now. YouTubers, go to the website, hardcorechristianity.com, and hit the teaching button. Go down and read the article, How Satan Controls the Mind. Read the article. Satan's counterattack. You must read those two articles tonight. You will get attacked within 48 hours of this service. The devil will come to attack you, and you must be ready for it. To launch a counterattack, you must be ready to attack back. If you do not attack back, you will relapse. If you do not attack back, you will relapse. Come on. You've got to learn spiritual warfare. You've got to learn how the spirit world operates, or you will never be successful in life. If you don't understand the spirit world, dude, you're in deep trouble. Sweetheart, you're in bad shape. I mean bad shape. You're in deep trouble. Come out right there. She got fear Come out right now. Spirit of fear. I bind your power right now. I command you to come out every word of Come out right now. Go. Come out. Infirmary, I bind you. I bind you. The spirit of infirmary. Come out. Come out of here. Hurry up. Next Friday night, the seminar on divine healing. Why are some people healing, some people are not? Man, you can't miss this. This information is gold. Gold from God's holy word. 7 o'clock, Mountain Time. 9 p.m. Eastern on our YouTube channel. Divine Healing Seminar next Friday with Brother Mike. See you then.